Hello everyone! In this video we finally arrive at the covariant form of Maxwell's equations. But before we get to that, I want to bring up a couple of things that bear mentioning. In some of my videos I may have given you the impression that things such as the covariant derivative and the covariant basis are important only in curved spaces, general relativity being the prime example. This just isn't true. Yes, in curved spaces we have no choice but to use the covariant derivative, the covariant basis, etc. But these things are just as important in flat spaces. Let me put it this way. Even if we didn't have general relativity, all the things we learned about the covariant derivative, the metric, the Christoffel symbol, etc. would still be important and useful. For example, in flat spacetime, the type of coordinates we're used to look something like this. The different color coordinate lines may not be parallel, but the directions of the bases are forever fixed, and therefore the Christoffel symbols are zero everywhere. But, if you wanted to, could we not choose some crazy coordinates like these? Of course we could, as long as the different color lines never cross. They may not be a wise choice, because unlike for these coordinates, the segments along each direction does not have a simple interpretation. So why should we care about crazy coordinates, you might ask? The reason is simple. Any theory that is valid only in a particular set or sets of coordinates is wrong. Nature doesn't care about what coordinates we choose, and therefore any correct theory must yield results that are independent of coordinates. If, for example, a phenomenon can be described by a scalar field, and hence by a single number at a specific point in spacetime, how we get to that point is completely irrelevant. Any theory that says otherwise cannot be correct. This is why tensors and covariant derivatives are indispensable. They allow the exploration of potential theories without worrying about coordinates. The main topic of this video is a wonderful demonstration of this. But there's just one more quick thing I need to mention before we get on. In a previous video I said that the rule of tensor multiplication is this. The first basis is dotted with the first vector the second basis with the second vector, and so on. I realized afterwards that tensor algebra is much more forgiving than that. There isn't really any rule. It all depends on what kind of object you want to form by combining two tensors. For example, say we wanted to combine two tensors. We could do it by pairing this index with this one, by dotting this base with this one. Or, we could pair this index with this one, which will give us a different object. What if we had a covariant tensor? Could we combine it with this tensor by, say, pairing these indices? Sure, why not? Notice that whatever we do, the indices are always contracted the correct way, the bottom with the top one. With this notation, it is virtually impossible to make a mistake. OK, finally, let's apply all this tensor stuff to a real-world problem. A couple of videos ago, we showed that the electromagnetic vector potential was a 4 vector and that, in Cartesian coordinates in flat space time, it was related to the 4 current via this equation. Here, the bases are just the unit vectors and the metric is flat. Now we want to express this relation in arbitrary coordinates. We saw in the video before the last that this operator was a scalar in flat space time in Cartesian coordinates. However, in arbitrary coordinates, it is not a scalar. To see this, watch this video and follow the same logic for arbitrary coordinates. So, we need an operator here that will contain two derivatives and transforms the vector A into another vector. We saw in the previous video on tensors that the kind of differential operator acting on a tensor must look like this, so as to take one invariant and transform it into another invariant. So, by doing this, we go from a tensor of rank 1 to tensor of rank 2. For brevity, let's call this guy BIM. We need one more derivative, so we must repeat this operation. However, we want to end up with a tensor of rank 1, as the right-hand side demands here, so we must dot this dual base with one of the bases here. But which one? Either choice will give us a tensor of rank 1. Let's look at both cases more closely. The capital D stands for the covariant derivative of the tensor B. Since what we want is a tensor of rank 1, 
expressed in terms of the covariant basis, we should replace this dual base with this. So we have two possible answers here, both of which seem correct, at least in terms of covariance. So how can we tell which one is actually the right one? The simplest thing to do is to see if one or the other or both reduce to this operator in Cartesian coordinates in flat space time. In such geometry, b will reduce to this, and the covariant derivative of b to this. So, the first possibility reduces to this, which is exactly what it should be. The second possibility reduces to this, which is not at all what it should be. So, we have our answer. This really shouldn't come as a surprise. By now, it should be clear that the transition from Cartesian coordinates in flat spacetime to arbitrary coordinates in any spacetime merely involves the replacement of an ordinary partial derivative with a covariant derivative. But it feels good to come to this conclusion using nothing but invariance, or what physicists like to call symmetry. So, the fundamental equation of electromagnetism in arbitrary coordinates is this. Okay, I will stop here. We'll continue this topic in the next video. Cheers.